John chapter 6 verse 32. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven. The children of Israel thought manna came from heaven. But Jesus is telling them, look, no manna has come from heaven. All that thing that was raining from above was not from heaven. Angels cooked in the atmosphere and dropped it for you people. Are you here? They thought they ate manna from heaven. From the day Adam fell, nothing came from heaven until Jesus came. Jesus is the first thing that has ever come out of heaven after creation. So that thing they thought was manna and they were eating and hiding and it was producing worms was not from heaven. Okay? He says, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven. But my father giveth you the true bread from heaven. What Jesus is saying is, I am the true bread. Nothing came from heaven that is bread. Then Jesus even challenged them somewhere and said, if what Moses gave them was manna from heaven, they wouldn't have died. They ate and died. He said, but I am the living bread that a man may eat and not die. That's why when you get born again, you pass from death All right, so he was talking of manna. Manna is bread, and Jesus is that bread which is revelation. Somebody say revelation. John 6 35. Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. How many of you have discovered as you begin to eat the word of God and you begin to understand the word of God, you are having a kind of satisfaction that nothing can provide? How many of you have discovered that? Money cannot provide it, car cannot provide it, house cannot. There's just this satisfaction inside you every time you think of the word of God. How many of you have discovered that? That's what Jesus meant. You will eat and not be hungry. He's not talking about human hunger, physical stomach hunger. He's talking about the hunger of life. So when you eat the bread, when you eat the word, you're satisfied. Sometimes you get out of service, you go home, you're so happy, you don't even remember that you have not eaten. You're so full of joy because you have eaten the manner of life. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? Yeah? Alright, so that's the first thing. The second thing that was in the ark was Aaron's rod. Aaron's rod is Aaron's authority as a priest. In Numbers chapter 17, verse 2, 3, and 5. Speak unto the children of Israel and take of every one of them a rod according to the house of their fathers, of all their princes, according to the house of their fathers, twelve rods. Write down every man's name upon his rod. And thou shalt write Aaron's name upon the rod of Levi. For one rod shall be for the head of the house of their fathers. Verse 5. It shall come to pass that the man's rod, whom I shall choose, shall blossom. And I will make to cease from me the murmurings of the children of Israel, whereby they murmur against you. Verse 8. And it came to pass that on the morrow, Moses went into the tabernacle of, will, of witness. And behold, the rod of Aaron, for the house of Levi was boarded and brought forth birds and bloomed blossoms and yielded almonds. How can you put a dry stick on a dry ground overnight? By the next day, the stick has germinated. Not only germinated, it has brought leaves. Not only leaves, it has produced almonds. Let me tell you, when God touches the work of your hand, you can record the success of somebody's 50 years in one day. I don't know who I'm talking to here. Your days of delay are over. Amen. That amen is not good enough. Amen. Dry stick on dry ground. It's like saying starting a business when things are rough. People will tell you what's wrong with you. Why don't you wait? Let things settle. No, for believers, things don't have to settle. We settle things. As your amen will come like thunder, you will ride over this economy and fulfill your destiny. And fulfill your purpose. Things don't go down in Christ. Somebody said in Christ, nothing goes down in Christ. I didn't hear your amen like thunder. By the next morning, this guy's rod has bought Produce all kinds of things. And the Bible says God used that to distinguish between Aaron and others. 
I prophesy, God will distinguish you from the rest. Because of Christ in you, your story cannot be like their story. When others are giving up, you will be starting. When others are retiring, you will be refiring. The one who says, Amen, is louder, receive it by grace. Receive it by grace. Receive it by grace. Can somebody shout hallelujah?